Hello, hello, lovely humans of Earth. Oh my god, is it good to be back. I've missed this so much, and I've missed just all, all of you, all of it so much. I just want to say super quick, thank you so much for all the get well soon and good luck and all those messages. Very sweet. I know I didn't answer most of them, but because I was just unconscious for a couple of days, and then it just, I was overwhelmed. But... Oh, you guys are awesome. You guys are so sweet. Thank you for the patience and all of it. You guys are just awesome. And I really, really appreciate it. Ah, oh, man. And I'm so excited about this. Oh, also, you know how you guys are awesome? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of you guys that are awesome that um, just help me out with content, making videos, you know, just doing editing and stuff. And it's just so cool. Thank you so much. And speaking of that, I was speaking to one of you lovely humans and um we were talking about the xfm i did on the man moth channel and he was like wait that's weird though because i have those and the the season one you episode one you did isn't the same as the season one episode one i have and there was a lot of things that were missing and this and that and we were talking about how it wasn't the same so he was nice enough to um make this for me and apparently it's, it has you know reference images and stuff so I don't get as lost because I get lost a lot anyway mr. rusty dog thank you I will leave his channel in the description very sweet of you I really appreciate it let's see how this works I don't know what to call I didn't know what to call this I imagine I'm just gonna call it series one episode two but I don't know what it is because they don't really say it so I don't know we're just gonna go with it <laughs> and see how it works uh, apparently music is edited out, so I don't need to worry about that. So awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, he has his own channel if you want to check it out. Again, it's in the description. Anyway, oh, I'm just, <sighs> I feel good. I'm so happy to be back. And also the cold is left and stuff. It's not raining anymore. Today was a glorious day. And just finally, I, f I finally feel good and better. And I have a cough, cough drop. Sorry, it sucks. I know, but... It is what it is for a couple days. I'm going to have that there. But whatever. It shouldn't be a bother. Anyway. Just. I'm, I'm rambling. Because you know. That's what I do. But I just want to say thank you. You guys are very sweet. And very awesome. And yeah. So here we go. Um, yes. Play here. I, <laughs> I was like. Wait a minute. This is YouTube. But no. No it's not. Alright. Let's go. XFM 104.9. It's the Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah. So Dermot O'Diddley. Yes. Three weeks and weeks, weeks and weeks in a row, he doesn't even turn up, and now suddenly he's all over breakfast. I noticed, yeah, he's standing in for the breakfast show. Why weren't we asked to do that? Well, it's we were. Upsetting. Were we? Yeah. I didn't know about this. Yeah, but I don't want to get up that early, do I? Sure, sure. Uh, I feel a bit hungover today, actually. Do you? Yeah. What's happening? What, what, were you partying last night, were you? Well, not partying. We just went out, went out for a couple of drinks, then had a meal, and then went to the borderline and saw about. I'll tell you about that. It's good. You saw uh, a band? That's the first yeah. time in years, isn't it? It is, yeah. Movie. Yeah, because, uh, no, so, uh, you know John Sim, the actor? Mm, not really. He's in this band, right, called Magic, Magic Alex. And it was really good. They're sort of like, sort of like a friendly oasis. They got, you know, sort of yeah, quite, yeah, yeah. M you know, it's quite mank sort of feel. But it's really good. Good songs and everything. Is nice. he the singer? Yeah, no, he's a guitarist. Nice yeah. But it was full of actors, because it, because it, right? And I felt quite tall. That's ludicrous, because you're See, very short. <laughs> well, I am. I'm sort of, um, I was average, but now I'm not, I don't think. Five mm. or eight, that's what. But there, I was like quite, it was like Lilliput. <laughs> so I just, I just got to hang out at actors' <laughs> dudes. Well, all right, well, yeah. This is the reason, because our, our actors are often very quite handsome people, but yet they're always yeah, quite we obnoxious. Are, we are, we are, we are, we are. No, I mean, they're normally quite obnoxious for it. Again, you know, you're a good example <laughs> of that. And yet, yet, I think it must be the small man complex. That's what makes them so obnoxious and so kind of desperate for attention. Didn't right. realise it before. Steady on. Because, of course, I tower above everyone. You do, don't you? I'm, uh, for people who don't know who are listening, I'm six foot seven inches tall. That's, 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 oh, that's wow. how. That is a great image. Thank you for that. Wow. I knew there was a height difference there. I've seen them on extras, but I don't think I've ever seen that. Wow. Also, the other day, they were <laughs> the exact same thing happened to me. Um, they wanted, my brothers wanted me to be on an interview in a radio interview. Uh, to talk about, you know, the, the theater and the show and stuff. And um, no, <laughs> first of all, nerves. No, thank you. And um, second of all, it was early, and I was like, nah. <laughs> no, thanks. Also, who's going to listen? <laughs> well, well, whatever. But it was, it was, I just, I didn't do it, but.
same. I wasn't, I was ill too, so I was gonna be coughing a lot, and I was like, that's not gonna be good publicity, that's just gonna be awful. So, yeah, same. <laughs> I feel so famous now, I'm so posh. <laughs> um, that photo's brilliant. It's funny too, because this already happened twice when I looked at it. Steven Merchant's hand, the one with the watch, and then there's like some fleshy color of an elbow of somebody sitting in the background, and I, this happened twice already. I thought Ricky, I thought they were holding hands. I thought that was like Ricky Gervais's hand because it's like the fleshy color. And I thought they were just kind of holding hands walking down the street. Daddy's taking Ricky for a stroll. <laughs> Baby Ricky, let's cross the street or something. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's and, and, and um, for people who've never seen him, he doesn't hold it well. It's not like he's a sort of handsome athlete, is it, Carl? He's I a bit of a, what was... I honestly think I've seen, there was a video I've seen particularly of Steven accepting an award. I can't remember if it was for extras or the office or what it was. But I, I, I think he, I, I disagree. I think he's handsome. He's just, he's got the goofy glasses and stuff, but, and he's like freakishly tall, but that has nothing to do with it. You call him a Carl, don't answer. No, 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 no. Don't get drawn into that. No, no, you know, no. you know the game he's playing. No, 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 no. Do you know yesterday when you were in the office? Yeah. You did a little move, and it reminded me of Blakey. <laughs> Uh, oh, I hate you, Gervais. Oh, I hate you, Pilkington. That's his stance. Yeah, but yeah, even he was, he held it a little bit better, didn't he? Because he was a man, you know, yeah. he had a big coat and everything, a peak cap. But, uh, yeah. I can't believe you. Like, I've not suffered enough from being freakishly tall. Now, two of my best buddies, yeah. live on radio, are just... It's not just the height, though, is it? It's the <laughs> posture and the face and everything. <laughs> it's got your places, hasn't it? <laughs> no. What do you no, mean he's got me places? I think I think people give you a bit more of a chance in in your career and stuff. Cause it's like, oh. well, yeah, stacking shelves. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can reach to a high level. <laughs> Muse, oh, plug in, baby, on XFM 104.9. Rick, Ricky Gervais, I, go on. Well, yeah, but I know you guys are laughing about the height thing, and uh, for those that have only just tuned in, I am six foot seven inches tall, which is which is tall, and that's big, and I, you know, I pride myself on it. What? What? Hold on. What is that? In... Oh, I'm so done with the imperial system. Makes no sense. What is that in freaking meters and feet? What is he say? Six, seven. Give me one sec. Gond six feet seven in centimeters. Oh, he is two meters tall. <laughs> that is a tall man. <laughs> well, you know, I've worked hard. I've not smoked. I <laughs> ate well. You know, yeah. it's an accomplishment. But obviously, I didn't have much involvement in it. I just am, and it's a curse because mainly the problem is that you you can't get stuff. You can't get clothes. You can't get shoes. You know? Yeah. Size size fourteen feet. Yeah, that's. But it is genuine, and I don't know. I mean, it costs a lot to buy a pair of size fourteen shoes. Probably. And it, so I don't. I mean, if you're poor, if you were genuinely poor, I don't know how you'd afford to be tall because <laughs> the clothing costs more. Everything costs. I've, more. I've seen this in comics that you'd you'd actually go to school in a barrel. Wearing a barrel with right. just braces, it'd yeah. just be a barrel, like that, and you'd have sort of flip flops, uh, <laughs> and you'd um, take a mule yeah. with you. They would have a mule, didn't they? The but poor people, people always think like it, that they like you'll be in a pub or something, and people, I mean, people just think they can talk to you about it. They just think, hey, oh, you, you lanky, uh. it's just like, because it's like <laughs> they, but that really annoys you, <laughs> doesn't it? Well, it annoys me because it's like they think I should be proud of it. Like well, exactly, but that they don't think that this this is not a disadvantage. This is not a disability, is it? You're you're taller than most people. It might it get a disability. To, no, no, no. If you was if you were eight foot three. Be slightly disabilitating. You would, you know, but disabilitating. You, you're, what disabilitating? <laughs> yeah. No, you're a medical man, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> but no, the point is, it's a disabilitating because <laughs> you go on public transport. Like if you're on a coach. Uh, yeah. You, the only place I can sit on a coach is that seat on the driver's lap. You know, either on the driver's lap or that seat at the very end. Yeah. You know where, which is kind of, which sits into the aisle. Yeah. That's the only okay, place I can. Okay, glasses are extremely different here because the last seats are like way up high, so that there was no, way, there's no way he'd be able. To, to sit there. Um, I used to have a friend. Well, I met him briefly. But whatever. That guy was super chill. But he was two meters, about 15 centimeters. He, the guy was taller than, he was huge. And apparently, I, I talked to him about it a lot. And there was a lot of people that told me about it. That That is it. That is the only thing every conversation in his life will be about. 
he would walk down the street with friends or whatever and that's people would stop and take pictures and just you know how's the weather up there and all that and just like he said and it's it's that's it that's that's it <laughs> you know that meme um Everybody asks, what the dog doing? But nobody asks, how the dog doing? It's basically like that. Everybody always asks, hey, how tall are you? And nobody asks, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> but um, he used to play with it because, I mean, he. there was a point where you just got to accept it and that's your life and that's it'll always be your life. And he would mess with people and stuff and they would ask him, like, how tall are you? Like, yeah, I'm 318 or something like people. And people were, there's like no reference because he was so much taller than everything else. People would just believe it, like, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> it's funny too because in Argentina, um, now with the pandemic, it changed a little. It's actually coming back. But the common thing is when you meet up with someone, even if, or you meet someone new for the first time or you meet up with someone or whatever, it's a kiss on the cheek. You don't have to actually kiss on the cheek. It's, ma it's mainly cheek to cheek doing a kissy sound, basically. And every time I saw that guy, again, he was so sweet. But every time I saw that guy, I'm, 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 I'm 161, people. I'm 5'3". I'm, I'm apparently tiny. I never felt small in my life, but I'm apparently tiny. And every time this guy saw me, he would have to, like, <laughs> I can't show you because the camera's cut off. But he would have to like crawl down and get on his knees and basically just like go all the way down. And I would go on my tippy toes as far as I can to, to just give him that kiss of hello, you know. <laughs> it always made me feel bad because he would like on the street, he would just like crawl to the floor just to say hi to me. Oh man. Anyway, funny. But yes, dude, that's. That's it. That's all t people will talk about. And that's all people will ask about. The guy has had questions of, can you drive? Do you fit in a car? Do you fit in a bus? How do you do this? How much do your shoes cost? How much do you weigh? You know, how big are your feet? And all that. It's, where do you get clothes? It's all that. It's all the same stuff. Poor guy was exhausted. But, 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 clever man. He started using it to his advantage and actually had mad game with uh, the ladies. And now, for some reason, that it's not game anymore. People have Riz. Whatever the hell that is. But whatever, same thing. He just st stand and there's up, some sort of stand up the back, waving it right, on the driver's lap. Yeah, that, <laughs> holding on the driver's lap, or that seat at the oh, very God. end, yeah. you know, where, which is kind of, which sits into the aisle. Yeah. That's the only place I can Why don't you just st and stand up some sort of stand at the back, waving at drivers? You could drive it thing. from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes, watch it. Yeah. Were, were you a tall baby? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mr. Mrs. Merchant, uh, you've given birth to a basketball player. <laughs> Look at his dribble already. Were you a tall baby? Babies aren't tall. Oh, what, right. at what point did did a you suddenly baby. like Jesus? Nothing fits me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't happen overnight. Carl. Let's do a little graph. How tall were you at five? Oh, I don't know. Three foot. Three foot. How tall were you at twelve? Six foot. Six. What are you in? I don't know, do I? How no, do I don't. remember? I don't remember this. Well, when did teachers start calling you freak boy and Man, they Didn't they? Wasn't, wasn't <laughs> didn't they? So much. It was no. He went to a funny school. <laughs> I went bowling with him once. Well, I'd never been bowling before, and he'd been once before. And he went, let's go to this bowl. We went to a bowling alley, right? And um, you have to wear these special shoes. Now they're they're sort of like pointed things anyway, and they're um, multicoloured, sort of red and green. Like, they look pretty weird. And uh, so and the woman them. said to me, oh, what size? I said, oh, eight. She went, yeah. So what size are you? She went, 14. She went, 14. He went, you probably haven't got them. He goes, she goes, yeah, I think we have got one pair. And she put them on the table and it was like Krusty the Clown. <laughs> and I just started laughing. They looked Bob. So no, 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 no. Krusty has small feet. Sideshow Bob has the big feet. Learn your facts, sir. Um, wow. Fun fact. Argentina's so poor when you go bowling, they don't give you shoes. That's not that's not a thing here. <laughs> you just go with your own shoes. And if you wore if you just happen to be wearing heels or whatever and a friend says, Hey, let's go bowling and you're like, Okay, you're screwed. So long and he had to run around this bowling alley in these freaky clown yeah, but shoes. But they don't look freaky clown like when I'm wearing them because the rest of me is in proportion to it. It looks like a little wall bracket. The one of the worst thing one of the worst things that happened to me was when I was like I don't know, when I was about sixteen or something, we went to um it's a fire uh, there's alarm a fire alarm going off. There's a fire alarm going off. And the off fire lights going off. Yeah. Should 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 we not just should maybe play a record and go and check that out? Wrap it up if you want. Oh, no, no, not wrap it up. Play a record. I'm gonna go. No, the See fire. It's gone off, Rick. It's gone off. Oh, 
Well, we might have burned down. Yeah, I think we'd know about it. The flames licking around our ankles would be a clue. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go and investigate. Oh, you shouldn't ignore oh, a fire alarm, did you? Blimey! We're entertaining oh, the nation. Oh, look at him, he's scared of fire. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Mercury Rev. The dark is rising. Oh, That's down. a good song, isn't it? I noticed that you're um, investigating the fire. Mainly involved wandering out into the office, looking around a bit, then coming back. Yeah. What did you find out? There was no fire. There was no fire. No. Right. right. But I love that. Ah! Ah! Imagine that though. Imagine like, th there's a fire and there's loads of firemen. They go get back and you go to the fireman. Oh, get back! Ah! Ah! Oh, look at him. I would. Ah! I would. I'd actually yeah. be justified to. Okay. There's heavy shelling, lads. Retreat. Oh, back, Sarge. I'm sorry. Back, Sarge. Yeah. Just there was a fire alarm. I'd never seen it before. A fire thing going off. There was a fire alarm. I thought, oh, let's at least have a look if there's a fire. <coughs> That's all I thought. See, there's some official coming in now to tell us we should have been running out. There's no fire. Well, you can't just stop entertaining, you know, the people of London just because there's a fire. This isn't the Titanic. Oh, oh, okay. I don't have to carry on playing. I don't know. I, it feels I, like a bit of a sinking ship, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you right? Nice one. Oh, nice one. I don't know who oh. I'm taking off then. Probably me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, listen, let me just tell you briefly, this, this is a, another example of, of how people can just exploit you and make fun of you when you're tall. Yeah. Um, I was quite tall. I've always been like about six foot seven for quite a while now. And when I was about 16, um, I went to a, a big New Year's celebration in Bristol where I come from. And they, everyone kind of congregates in this big sort of part of town and there's all sort of people dancing around like in Trafalgar Square. And um, I was there and I, somehow I sort of, I just picked up a balloon somewhere along the line, one of those kind of helium sort of balloons and I was holding that sort of dancing around. And um, these two girls came up to me and I was thinking, yeah, okay, you know, it's New Year's Eve, brilliant, you know, that's, uh, that's the, my kind of party. Yeah. And they came up and they went, hey. Once a year. And they went, <laughs> they said, uh, you're going to be here for long? And I went, well, maybe. And they said, it's just that we've arranged to meet back at you <laughs> in about an hour. <laughs> I went, what do you mean? I went, well, it's just because we can see you wherever you are. <laughs> Don't worry, you can move around and stuff, we'll see you with the balloon. <laughs> just arrange to meet some friends. Oh, I love that, a landmark. So, like, so the pilots use that. Oh, we're just coming in. Yeah, there's, uh, we'll be, uh, when we see Steve Merchant, we'll be descending <laughs> to Bristol Temple Mead. <laughs> What's really funny is New Year's Eve, Trafalgar Square, you've got a huge column, but the yeah. Steve is like the meeting point. Steve's got a huge funny. column. Brilliant, Rick. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Award-winning go. comedy. Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> <coughs> oh my God, dude. Happy Monday. T took you back, didn't it? Happy Mondays there, Manxy. Now Carl's like really getting down. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh come on. Got come any on. Vera's? Oh come on, Mel. Ah. Did it take you back, did it? Yeah. How old are you? Yeah. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. So you were? Oh, you were just going in uh, out of your teens. I'm a Virgo. No. What? Same. No. That. That. No, you don't understand. It's just. Uh, I'm Rick, a Virgo. I thought we discussed about involving Carl. <laughs> yeah, in sorry, discussion. yeah. The yeah. management have told us we're just not allowed to do it. <laughs> We've had emails from yeah. people. Please don't it's speak to Carl. It's cruel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm a cost. Can I just make an appeal? I don't want to. I'm a cost for the Virgo, he said. <laughs> Still going through with it. Doesn't know what's going on, does he? Oh, just man. wave bright objects at him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we've got a competition this, Steve. We have, but before we mention that, on. can I just ask something? I don't want to exploit our position on the radio. No. But I wonder, because I'm very tall, and it's very tricky for me to get size 14 shoes and big clothes and stuff, can I just get people to send some stuff if, if like, maybe they own a shop which Yeah, but it'd be, it'd be things like homemade clogs That's that people cool. have carved out of That's chunks cool. of wood they found That's in whatever. the shed. Whatever. It's not well, really great. America. When I was in America, I, everyone says to me, like, you go to America. It was a cool. I'm out of my own skin. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was in America, everyone told me that. You just know, what? just knowing Ricky, you just know he did that weird cross-eyed thing where one eye goes even more in than the other for some reason. You just know it. Yeah. It's not when really I was in great. America. When I was in America, uh, everyone says to me, oh, you go to America. It was a cool. I'm out of yeah. my own skin. <laughs> Um, when I was in America, everyone told me that it would be, re you know, really easy to get big clothes and big shoes and that, because they're all huge and all freaks over there. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I steady on. And I was wandering around New York, and I was going in a few shops, kind of saying, you know, we've got size 14, US 15 shoes, and they were going, no, they, we want something <laughs> Is that the difference? Yeah. One. And they literally were laughing at me. There was a couple of shops where they literally laugh and get, like, someone else in and come and look at the tall, freaky Englishman. Really? And then one guy said, oh, I remember we had someone come in here once, and he said he'd been to a shop which sold kind of stuff for really tall people, and, and, um... And he said, I think I can remember the address, and he sort of looked through the, the sort of telephone direction, he made a note of it. And I went on the subway, and I went through all Lily put. And I, and I went, cause it took me ages to get there, really hard to find it. I finally went in there, I've never seen it, it was heaving, right, with freaks. 
it really? was amazing. They were, it was like, they just kind of gargoyles. It was like something from Lord of the Rings. They were just kind of these tall people and kind of gnarled. Did they turn around and start people. bowing to you? It was incredible. Yeah. And I went in and I just said, hi, I'm looking for a kind of da 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 sort of thing. I went, yeah, sure. And he sort of hobbled off into the darkness and came back with exactly the kind of pair of shoes I wanted. I couldn't believe my luck. It might be a magic yeah. shop. But it was like, it was like that shop in, um, Mr. Ben. It might have been a dream though, you yeah. see. <laughs> Did you, have you still actually got the shoes? No. Because when Mr. Ben sort of like goes back and wakes up next day, he Mr. finds like a feather in his pocket where he remembers he, he was a, you know, a 17th century sort of squire or something. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> ah, the classic episode of Mr. Ben when he becomes... I obviously never been a part of them because... But isn't there, isn't there a lot of like big and tall shops in the States? Or, you know, if you want shoes and your foot is so gigantic, just buy basketball shoes because they're all just freaking boats. Like, I shop at the small and tiny store, so I don't know, but, I mean, I just, I can imagine all kinds of basketball shoes, and they're just gigantic. My brother, one of my brothers, he's not that tall, he's normal. I'm pretty sure he's like 180, 182, maybe. Um, I believe he's a size 13 in the States, so if it's just one less, it's a size 12. That's like, that's not proportional. His feet are huge, okay? Talk about Sideshow Bob. <laughs> and his shoes are just d d boats. I can, I can take him on a river and just go rafting or something. It's crazy. So, and he never had trouble getting them. I get that it's a couple sizes more, but... I think he went to the wrong shops. <laughs> 17th century <laughs> squire. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Mr. Ben learns to play the harpsichord. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, like, when Mr. Ben, that, that black shopkeeper goes, right, are you going to pay for that? You're, yeah, not, you're not just going to go yeah. through that door and then have an adventure and come back. Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> no, you're not. You're barred. Yeah. You just make me sick. We, we wait nothing from you. <laughs> well, I'm not in this for your amusement, Mr. Ben. Is it only Ben who's got the insider knowledge about the magical doorway? or I don't know, because that, that fella in the fez doesn't seem to have anyone else there. No, rarely. He's always grinning, though. He knows yeah. something. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not a documentary, though, is it? It's a, it's, it's a kids' show, isn't it? I can't remember. No, it's not. It's just a kids' show, so anything sure. can happen. Yeah. That's yeah. A, a lot of people make that mistake sure. when they slag off something like Scooby Doo or oh. Thundercats. It's not not really Thanks, reality. Yeah. It's just a kids' show. Well, Mr. Ben, they were all on drugs, weren't they? Like Magic Roundabout. My mate fancied Chitera from Thundercats. Oh, look at that. Um, Who wouldn't? I quite like she was. She was. She was a lovely. She's a lovely cat. Yeah, she was a real dish. What's the what's the what's the sexiest cartoon? Oh, I'm glad you've asked. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people say Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> they do, and they'd be right to say that because she's actually lovely. She's a lovely cat. Yeah, she was a real dish. What's the what's the what's the sexiest cartoon? Oh, I'm glad you've asked. Uh, a lot of people say Jessica Rabbit. They do, and they'd be right to say that because she's actually human. She's not an animal, which is good. What? Isn't she? No, no, she's she's a normal woman married to a rabbit. That, I don't know. <laughs> that's that's yeah, she's not. Yeah, Jessica Rabbit. Is that what she got a surname, Rabbit? But yeah, she's not actually. She's a rabbit. married Roger Rabbit, but she's not actually a rabbit. She's a glamorous woman. Is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never yeah. seen it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the weird thing about it. That's weird, though, isn't it? It is weird, the idea of a rabbit having sex with a beautiful woman. That, that is the weirdest thing about it. How does that make you feel? Annoyed, <laughs> if I'm honest. Of course. Yeah. But I bought some bunny ears just after I saw the film. Oh, hip hop. There was a competition, right, on Virgin, right? I was listening. Virgin, I think one of. Wait, that's it? That's. I don't know what Virgin is, but that's that's the whole conversation of the sex. Ad. There was, There's so many sexy cartoons to talk about, but okay, okay. One that comes to mind is, I can't remember her name, but the mean lady in Kim Possible. Virgo or something like that. I don't know, but she wore green. Just throwing that out there. Five point four. No, what is it? Oh, I, I can't know. remember. Yeah. Um, good station. Good, good station, yeah. good station. Um, and they had a competition, right? And it was to win a trip to America for the on the Enterprise. It was all about space. And there was one there was one question to answer three, right? And it was who was the first one into space? Yuri Gagarin. Um who's doing that? And then the third question was um how how much bigger than the moon is the sun? Is it twice as big or four times as big? And this one went four times as big went correct. It's not. It's hundreds it's of times bigger. bigger. I can't yeah. believe. Uh, can Did someone the look at the moon? Damn the sun! How much bigger remember. the moon yeah. um, than the good, sun? Good station. Yeah. Good station. Um, and they had a competition, right? And it was to win a trip to America for the on the Enterprise. It was all about space. And there was one. There was one question. Had to answer three, right? And it was who was the first one into space? Yuri Gagarin. Um, who was doing that? And then the third question was um, how how 
much bigger than the moon is the sun. Uh, is it twice as big or four okay. times as big? And this one went four times as big, went correct. It's not. It's hundreds it's of times bigger. bigger. I can't yeah. believe. A lot more uh, can someone look that up on the internet? And how many times bigger is the sun than the moon? It's not four times. It's it's huge. Is it's you, like beach ball to a pea type you want dimension. Me to look it up? Which DJ was oh. it? Do you remember on Bruce? I'll look it up. Give me a second. I'm on it, sir. How the hell do I word that though? Let's try. How many times bigger is the sun? Okay, but <sighs> the sun's diameter. I do. I didn't. I didn't want to read it because of that. The sun's diameter is. 864,000 miles, which is approximately 400 times larger than the moon at only 2,160 miles. So, 400 times. They were off by a couple of zeros, but still, the, the, the thought was there. I can't remember, but it was the one on sort of about 11 o'clock. Oh, 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 Wouldn't want to be him, um, yeah, he's embarrassed himself, isn't he? Himself. When we do quizzes, we never get anything wrong. That's true enough. During that track, I'm, I'm chilling out, I'm loving it, aren't yeah. I? Carl goes, do you know how baguettes came about? <laughs> Do you know how baguettes come about? I went, go on, and Steve went, no, save it. Wait a minute, though, I'm thinking, Rick, people are going to be desperate to know the answer to that. Why don't we play some uh, ads and some music and stuff? It's like a cliffhanger. Exactly. <laughs> how did ba baguettes come about? Whatever he says is going to be good, Stay tuned to XFM to find out. Yes. Now, most people think we talk rubbish on air. Yep. If they could hear the conversations Off that there. go on, I know. But, um, someone just emailed in saying the sun is indeed about 400 times bigger than the moon. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, that, that, that DJ must have looked it up and said, um, 400 times, that can't be right. It's probably, they probably, it's probably printed an error four times. <laughs> yeah. Nothing can be 400 times bigger than the moon. <laughs> um, Carl went, yeah, but uh, the sun, it's only got a million years, isn't it? I went, what? He went, on that space program, it said that in a million years, the sun will be destroyed. And he said, and then we're all shafted. <laughs> right? I went, I laughed. Steve went, no, it's okay. By then, we'll be on another planet. <laughs> no, I think that's yeah. true. We'll have colonised right. other planets. Carl went, yeah, but there'd be no sun. Steve went, well, there's other suns, which is true. Carl went, well, I went, well, yeah, ev every star is a sun. Carl went, mm, well, not, not really. <gasps> Not really. Don't, don't believe that, do you? And I went, no, it is. The sun is just a star. It's not even a particularly big star. Carl went, well, why didn't they say that instead of worrying me? <laughs> instead of worrying me. In a million years time. Yeah. I love yeah. Carl, he's been preserved. Brought back life, but he's now the ruler of the world. Just a head in yeah. a fish tank. <laughs> and he speaks like this. I am Pilkington. <laughs> the reason, the reason you became king of the universe, of course, is because of your fascinating <laughs> French bread anecdote. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on then. What, how, how did baguettes come about? If this is going to be someone cooked a loaf a bit wrong and said, oh, "I can still make a sandwich out of it," I'm going to hit you. Hit? No, 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 no. Go on then. Um, right, Napoleon, when he was at war and that with um, Russia. Uh -huh. 1812, yeah. Yeah, all his soldiers were like, you know, not used to the cold weather and that. <laughs> so they said, take, take some clothes in your bag with you because it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be nippy, nippy yeah. out there. So um, they put all the clothes in the bag. Sure. Do they were told. Thought, oh, it's Napoleon, for Christ's sake. No I room thought. for any food. No room for You're food. joking. So, um, Could they make some sort of like sandwich? <laughs> no, it wouldn't fit because of all the clothes. You have to take extra yeah. gear. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so, um, anyway. I can that, see where I this know. is going. <laughs> <laughs> is there a baguette shaped gap left in their holdall? They thought, let's make some bread that you can fit down your trouser leg. What? That's not true! That's not what I'm doing! In Euston train station, I was waiting to go back to Manchester. Where did you read these? scrawled on the wall in Yeah. Do you know the upper... Was it also meet me here for cock fun at 12 o'clock? The upper cross sandwich shop, Euston station. It's on the wall. What do you mean it's on the wall? I love Google. Don't you? Um, I, I kind of want to ask it like they did, like he did. How did baguettes come about? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first. It's the first search result, dude. Oh my god. Well, this this isn't... Well, actually, maybe, okay, the history of the baguette is contested, and there are few facts pointing to a single definition, definitive origin, sorry. 
One theory attrib attributes the baguette's invention to Napoleon Bonaparte, who, according to legend, ordered that bread be made extraordinarily thin and long to better fit into a special pocket in soldiers' uniforms! No way, dude. No way. Th this, this Somebody... <laughs> Somebody saw this, somebody knows Carl, and then wrote it, because no way. It's too much. That's hilarious. Thank you, Carl, for the knowledge, and thank you, Google, for confirming the knowledge. Confirming, <laughs> but whatever. Do you know how it says, like, <coughs> sail on at Dixon's, whatever? Yeah. Next to that, there was like a bit of information. Once you've read the stuff on Dixon's, baguette information. There was there was a big thing about the history of the baguette. I read it and I thought, ah, oh. <laughs> no, we, we, we got we got to make a sandwich. We can spit down our trouser leg. <sighs> but how can you march and fight with it's, a huge piece of bread? See, he got it wrong. It's it's the Carl Pilkington thing of not knowing how to freaking communicate properly because it's it's a special pocket, not down the leg, not like strapped to your leg. As you know, third leg. It's it's a there's a pocket, people. That's the crucial information he's missing to make this a little bit more believable. Then you're at Oh, that would be intimidating. You see him coming, you go sacre bleu. Look at the size <laughs> of them. <laughs> they're, they're, they're big fellas. Sacre bleu. Well, <laughs> I, I I can't help but feel that could be a practical joke at your expense. Yeah. Do well, the Earl of Sandwich. Do you question anything the, you read? If it's that, printed up, is that yeah. like fact for you then? Well, it's not funny. I mean, if they were trying to be funny, it's like oof. it's a it's funny. not, is it? So it's information. Have you heard us? <laughs> Think so, the, 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 that's, 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 that's exactly what happened with the sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich wanted something he could fit down his pants. <laughs> and uh, it was a, those triangle cut sandwiches wrapped in cling film were perfect. Uh, um, you might be right. You might be right. I am. Because the cornish pasty so they could drop it down the mines, isn't it? Is it? They, yeah, they wrapped it up in a, they wrapped up like That's what meat. you guys call pasties? That's an empanada. I've, I've, I've had this discussion so many times with a friend. Because he says it's made of corn. Empanadas here aren't made of corn, like the bread part. But that's an empanada, dude. Don't, don't. No me chamushin, chicos. That's an empanada. Vegetables in pastry, and they sort of crimped it, and it was like a little, and they dropped it down the mine, so. Yeah, that's what that came about. And bagels were originally made so that people could play hoopla, <laughs> but then eat afterwards. On I don't know if you're aware of that. Okay. That is true. Carl. Well, this anyway. Is like my bluff. Is yeah. Like true. Yeah. They're well, all true. They're all true. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your well, kids that when you have them. Yeah. <laughs> Joke on you. You know, if they're still alive in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. it might be true. Can someone confirm um, that baguette <laughs> fact that it was so Napoleon could stick it down Not him. his trousers? Not him, his, his soldiers. Man. His men. Yeah. Fascinating information. Fascinating bread information, Carl. Yeah, I learned yeah. something. Well, we've had lots of emails. Um, people obviously we inflamed uh, and provoked well, actually, about the, the, the Cornish with... pasty. Um, I've got a couple of amendments to that. The, the crusty bit, you know, is actually as a handle, because obviously the mines have dirty hands and they'd eat the all the stuff in the pasty, and they'd be left with this sort of crust, and they could throw that away. Mm -hmm. Also, someone told us that at one end was a like, apple, mm -hmm. so you have a little sweet as well. Little dessert. Ew. So there you go. You noticed how, like, over the years we've been doing this, you know, way mm -hmm. back when we started XFM, no one ever contributes when we ask about the music, no. when we ask about hip hop, no. or their you know opinions on Wait, that. Wait, now I'm curious because he said years. And I know there's season zero. This is supposedly season one, but if it's years, maybe this is season two. I don't know. I don't know what I'm watching, but whatever. It's great. Who cares? <laughs> I don't think the order is extremely important. No. Anything important. No. But start talking about pasties. Yeah. We've had about five phone calls. Yeah. And like, someone someone phoned up to confirm that they used to work for Upper Crust. And uh, basically, Carl got all excited. So uh, so it is true. She went, well, I don't know if it's true. I've, I've read the same sign you yeah. did, Carl. Interestingly, it, there's an email here that says, uh, which basically offers a history of the baguette, yeah. and uh, talks about after the revolution, the government decreed that all of France must eat the same bread, and it was up to the bakers to bake this bread of equality. Yeah. Um, and then Napoleon kind of um, made sure it was a particular, he kind of set in. in yeah, in, in, obviously on the bread you can eat anything you find in the garden, mm. frogs, snails, bits of horse, but squid. But the, <laughs> the interesting thing is, Rick, that there's no mention of sticking it down your trousers 
whilst going to war. The French have tried to keep that secret for <laughs> over a hundred years, <laughs> Steve. Up for a crust, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nearly, nearly <laughs> 200 years, that is a top secret. Somehow Houston Station up a crust got hold of a document, <laughs> left behind in an old sea chest, possibly oh Napoleon's, <laughs> could have been Josephine's, <laughs> unfortunately jotted it down. He's kicking himself now. Oh, <laughs> Sackler, I cannot believe I left the note. Oh, my God. If he talked like that. He did. He did, he did that, yeah. yeah he talked English, exactly. but in a very funny <laughs> French exactly. accent. Do you remember, <laughs> there was one thing that, talking about funny French accents, do you remember, you remember Allo Allo? Yeah. Remember, it was on about five o'clock in the afternoon, but they still met, because it was a funny Frenchman, it was that, that English guy who was posing as a French police yeah. officer. it's very complicated He plot. would often walk by, and he, I remember there was one where he said, uh, I was pissing by the door when I heard the shit. Oh, oh yeah. Now that's passing by the door. I'm allowed passing to say that. by the door when I heard a shot. That's what he's saying. I'm oh. allowed yeah. to say that at two o'clock because that I'm just saying I'm talking in a French accent. Yeah. I was pissing by the door when I heard a shit. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Because I'm speaking French, Carl. Do, do, you, do, you know, do you know what I mean? That's the rule. Do you know why people tinkle the tink? The glasses before they have a drink. Why they tink? The verb to tink. I do know that. You know Carl. what? Yeah. Now that I think about it, I'm sorry. I did just I. It was still working in the background. That I guess maybe yeah. This isn't season one. This can't be because Carl's quite involved, and I was told that the like in season zero, there's no Carl, and basically. And then um, season one, it takes about six or seven episodes for them to incorporate him more. So maybe, maybe Rusty, we jumped the gun. I don't know. I don't care. I'm having a great time, but I'm just, I'm just curious. If anybody properly knows, can you let me know? Because I'm curious now. Is it about poison? Do, do, you know, do you know what I mean? That's the rule. Do you know why people tinkle the, tink the glasses before they have a drink? Why they tink? The verb to tink. I do know that, Carl. Is it about poison? It is. Here we are. What would it make a different noise? Oh. Brilliant. Go on, explain Why? it. Why? You explain it, Steve. No, 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 don't, Steve. You explain it, Carl. <laughs> Go on. Oh, I've started, so I'll finish. <laughs> Go on, Carl. Explain why they tink the glasses. Ages ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> That's not one of my film reviews. <laughs> Years ago, welcome to History Now. Now, ages ago, only people with money had drinking or something. Keep going, Carl. Keep like, going. Like spirit and stuff, so yeah. they'd, um, it's, it's like businessmen, business, businessmen. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> this is getting to be cruel, isn't it? This is amazing. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Why go did on. you open your mouth, Carl? <laughs> what were you hoping was the best that could happen? Because you were trying to make me look stupid before with the planet, so I'm... Where is you now? <laughs> Yeah, go on, though, come on. Businessmen. Biz biz no, businessmen with money. I've got to drink and ching. Okay, so then we'll so they'd, drink. So they'd, so they'd nip round to have a chat about the whatever they're earning money with. And they'd say, right, do you want a drink then? And yeah. Go, oh, yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah. So yeah. rather than like um, just pouring it out of a bottle into a glass and saying, there you go, it, it could be going, hang on a minute. It could be poisoning me here and trying to like nick me business idea. Yeah. yeah. So what they'd do. It, it sort of pour a bit of his drink into the other person's glass, and you get that tink noise, uh, and that's like, like, cheers, you know. No, no, no Carl, I, I just have a slight amendment there. I think what it was was you're absolutely right that they would then test each yeah. other's drinks to see that show that it wasn't poison. But over the years, that was reduced to just chinking the glasses by way of saying let's not actually bother going through the whole rigmarole. Mm. They just did the yeah. chinking of the glasses. Yeah, well, kind of I, 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 yeah. yeah, that's 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 good. <sighs> it was exhausting though, wasn't it? I know. Was it worth it? Do you think? Well, I like that, because people carry that with them, though. When they do that, they think, oh, Carl. that bloke's definitely not trying to poison me. So the, the horrible thing is that now, when I do the glasses, I can laugh and go, they don't know I've poisoned them. <laughs> exactly. You should always do the pouring back and forth. I don't know if it's a meme or a proper video or if it was edited or what it was, but I've seen it happen a couple weeks ago. Well, it happened. The, the fact that I saw it happen a couple weeks ago. Um, where it was Putin and I can never properly remember his name, but the the guy from Korea, Kim, the Hyung Yung Kim or something something Kim. Um, they met and they both had like you know glasses of champagne, and I think I don't remember if they tinked or not, but uh, neither of them drank it. <laughs> You can, I, it might have been edited that way, but you can see like them working it out on both of, on both their faces. They're like, 
mm, I don't trust you. And they just kind of leave it on the table. <laughs> anyway. It's a shortcut. It's a slippery slope. You know, just be careful. We didn't say hello because we were away for a couple of weeks. We didn't come back and go, oh, we're back, did we? It's like nothing ever happened. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Did um, you have a good Christmas? Yeah, you? Yep. Yeah. Carl? Yeah, it's all right. Lovely. Okay, let's crack on. Good. My, um, I went on holiday after Christmas, yeah? Yeah. And, um, so did uh, our mutual friend, Phil Bowker. Yeah, good man. He, 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 he was in Lanzarote and he told me one of the funny... I don't know if I can tell this on the radio. I'll have to say the C word, I'll just go... It's in a sentence, so I just go, you see, when it comes, and you'll know that he's saying the sure. terrible word. Um, just, you know, didn't want to ruin the anecdote. Anyway, uh, they're walking along one evening in Anzarote, and there's lots of Brits there, apparently, and Phil overhears uh, a sort of a married couple arguing. They're having to go home a bit early, and she's saying to him, she went, for Christ's sake, every time we come out drinking, you always shit yourself. <laughs> right? Wow. Always, okay. not once. So he's going, ah, oh, I've told you, he said, it's not the drink, it's the weather. She went, the weather. You'll be blaming the food next, you see. <laughs> I don't think they should have got married. Wow. Or mate, when did you think the shit yourself started? Must have been after the marriage, because if it, it they, you know, you're caught in, and they go, went, went out with that. Uh, uh, Derek again, did you ask that? Yeah, how was it? It was the evening, was lovely, the meals nice, but he shot himself. Again. Again. That's, that's five dates, five different heaps Stop of Stop drinking alcohol! Are you kidding me? I think I, I can me? change him. I think I can change him, yeah. It must have happened after the marrying. Or he just might have think, oh god, I've got... Or he's got to that age where he think, look, I'll just empty it when I get home. Yeah. I'm not going to keep going up and going to the toilet, you know. It's the ice that does it. Yeah, Carl is right, I think. It is the ice. What do you mean? People forget, you know, they say, oh, don't don't drink the water when you're on holiday, and they, and they don't, they drink, you know, they buy Evian and stuff. Oh, I see. They forget about the ice. The ice cubes, you're right, in a bar, made from tap water. And that can do it, can it? Yeah. But what did she you drinking, didn't she? I assume that she wasn't drinking ice then. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, why is it just happened to well, him? Let's be honest, everyone that goes on holiday doesn't end up crapping themselves. Yeah, yeah, they usually make it to a toilet. It, he does it every time he drinks, doesn't he? Yeah, well, apparently. Just don't let him carry the baguettes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's good, isn't he? Oh, Carl comes out with something. He does now and again, High doesn't he? Carl, that was sweet, man. That yeah, sweet. nice one. Yeah, respect you. Right, we've got another feature now. Yes, this is a feature which we introduced before Christmas, and it was so popular, we brought it into 2002 <laughs> as well. Yeah. And it's we've carried it over with us. It's, it's an interesting thing. And I don't, th I don't think we'll ever run out of features for no, it. I don't uh, think so. Go on, then what's the feature called, Steve? Brilliantly, it's rather brilliantly called A Song That I Like. Yeah. And in it, let me explain. Go on, go on. Game. What I do is, in it, I play a song... What, um, that you like, or...? That I like. Oh, right, yeah. so you just pick a few... Oh, well, hmm, let me go, I'm going to explain this. All the songs, right, there are, Carl. Steve likes some of them, he doesn't like others. Exactly. Gloria by Patti Smith. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I love it. I've, 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 I've always been one of my favourite tracks. And as Carl pointed out, sounds remarkably like, uh, who did you mention? PJ, PJ Harvey. Harvey. Oh, yeah, well, well, yeah, everyone knew that. that she was obviously very influenced by her. That's fine, that's fine. That's all right, yeah. that's allowed. That's, that's cool. I like that's PJ allowed. Harvey too. Exactly. There's enough room for two. You're absolutely right. <sighs> oh, here we let's are, just, Let's just take a moment to think about what we've done, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's no been good. It's, uh, we've enjoyed it's, it's an hour and 20 minutes. We've, we've, we've talked about, um... Oh, shit in yourself. We talked about pasties. We've done, done pasties, we've done pasties. And a number of pastries, Baguette. actually. Um, we did never got the, um, we should go in a competition, who's the, who's the, um, tastiest cartoon ever. Well, actually, I threw up she Terra. I threw up, um, oh. Jessica Rabbit. I've had some people contribute here on go the on. email. Um, we've got someone here, Dom has, uh, emailed us. He's told us that, so for him, Daphne from Scooby-Doo. Yeah, popular, popular choice, popular and choice. And obviously this is one I've, uh, I've never quite understood. Wilma from the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually always felt People that like Wilma, redheads. I don't know, I just thought she was a bit... No, not Wilma. Hungry. Betty, surely. Yeah, yeah, Betty. Well, this is what I'm hearing. Wilma, yeah, yeah, I mean, Betty. Yeah, Betty, surely, but Wilma? No, no I mean, she's quite homely. <laughs> <laughs> but Betty, oh, yeah. Come yeah. on, Steve, you wouldn't say no to Wilma. Well, I suppose not. If it was like, well, I'd be worried about Fred if he found out. <laughs> I would, well, I'd hate to do it, you know. I wouldn't want to do it to Fred. He's a good guy. He is, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's a bit of a jump. Whereas, whereas Barney, 
To be honest, I don't yeah. think he deserves Betty. Do they both work in the quarry? <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, let's be honest, Fred, not a smart man. I mean, he obviously uh, didn't come out of, uh, of rock school with anything other than a couple of basic O-levels. I know, but he's a hard, he's, he's, you know, he's a hard-working sound sort of but guy. they've got a big house, they've got, like, a TV, they've got that bird thing. Yeah. They I mean, I, 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 be honest, if I was Fred, I would be a little bit disappointed that my kid does nothing, whereas Barnes can lift up, sort of, tall buildings. Sure. Bam, bam. He's yeah, a very yeah. strong... You know. I mean, interestingly, um, <laughs> Fred loves his job. He's always yabba dabba doing at the end of the day. <laughs> he does yabba dabba. He's the whole day lifting rocks from one place to another. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't take that from that cat, though. <laughs> I would. If a cat picked me up by the scruff neck and put me out, yeah. right, on the doorstep, oh, I'd right. go mental. I'd get rid of it. It is a saber-toothed tiger, though, Carl, so it could rip him to shreds. It's not like a normal domestic cat you have nowadays. You know when they go to the drive-in? At the beginning. Yeah. And they order um, maybe some ribs. Yeah, that huge. that huge rib and it tips okay. a car over. Yeah. Was that her first day on the job? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I've got... never been ordered before. Yeah, or either it's that, or... she'd have realised Or, that, or yeah, we're out of pig. We, we've got brontosaurus rib. Exactly. He goes, won't that knock the car over? No, it won't. I don't know. Rick, can I tell you now, that was an accident waiting to happen. It was really, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and it did. Oh, dear. Mind you, I, had a, I went in te to Texas once, and I had some ribs, and it was like the Flintstones. It was huge. And not only did it look too much like an animal that I couldn't actually eat it, I don't know who could eat it. I mean, seriously, it was two foot long. Yeah. And all the rib... It was like half a rib cage. And I it just... It is incredible. My friends were... Lived in Texas for a while, and they, uh... They once were in a kind of diner, and there was, um... You know those kind of benches that are attached to the table the yeah. itself? Like a kind of picnic yeah. bench. Yeah. And, uh, this huge fat guy came in, he came wobbling, he ordered, like, this kind of everything you can eat meal, and his fat kind of, sort of, you know, kind his of... His uh, big fatty, itself. fatty fatness fatted exactly. on the fat... Table, it, yeah. ra it, it wrapped itself around the uh, table and everything. Oh, he was God. chowing down, and when he tried to leave, the table came up with him. Oh no! Imagine that! I mean, they are fat, aren't they? They're big people. They're huge people. But it was that thing we talked about like, before that um, uh, bloke on Jerry Springer stone, it was like 80 stone, right? Mm. Now, what the quite... hell is a stone? How is someone like that picture 80 stone and then. I think the other day I heard someone was nine stone and it was like a big guy. I'm what the, the stones confused me. What the hell? How how did that even freaking come about? It's so weird. It's such a weird measurement. It's so large. Each sto how much is each stone? Cause it's like a lot. Stone to kilo. 6.35 kilos. Why is it that? Wait, so what's eight? Wait, whoa. Eighty stone. Five, 500 kilos? 500, almost 10 kilos? That's, that's. Oh, no, not nine stone. Nine stone can't be a big guy. Oh, hey, I guess I'm like nine stone. Ish. <laughs> I learned something. <laughs> but it's still very weird. Sorry for him. He was really sad. He was crying. <laughs> it is rad. But my point is this, right? When he got to, say, 50 stones, sure. didn't he go, that's too much that's gonna be enough for a, for a land animal? <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's big, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I'm getting worried. I'm 13 stone. And I'm genuinely getting worried. I'm thinking, oh, Yeah, God. when you've got that big, when you've actually... Dude, if it's weird to say I'm nine and he's thirteen. That's such a difference. Jesus. It's it's weird. It's but are are there no in betweens? Cause six point thirty five kilos. It's it's a lot. Do you guys not say nine and a half stone, nine and three quarters stone? Because it's, it's... Jesus. when you when you make goals to lose weight, do you just go kilos or go pounds, which is even <laughs> easier? I can lose half a pound, <laughs> and it's just like a couple grams. <laughs> I mean, what? How does the goal work? Oh, I'm nine stone. I want to be. I want to lose five kilos. You're still nine stone! Weird.
you've got your own mare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you have time. when you have to get in helpers to to w look what the scale says. Yeah. Like they get four or five people lift up your belly and go. It's 52 stone. You go. That's too much. Exactly. That's too. I'm going to only have nine breakfasts. When you actually, today. when you begin to appear on the ordnance survey, map, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you've you got your see, own symbol, it's <laughs> like we can see two things from space now: Fatty and Steve Merchant. <laughs> we'll be landing right, that about. Well, well, no, I'm just saying. You're not fat, are you? Freakish and big. Just it's, another quick thought. They, someone's mentioned Daphne from Scooby Doo, and I've, yeah. but I've always had a soft spot for Velma. Velma. Because Velma's oh, no. glasses. I mean, I'd have, I'd have She's had She's clever. Can I tell you what would have happened if I was in that environment? I was maybe on the. Mystery Your glasses would have got tangled no, up. I'd have always had an I'd always be making a play for Daphne, right? And I, Velma would have fancied <laughs> me, but yeah. I've always ignored it because I was playing for Daphne. And then when I finally realised it was never going to happen with Daphne, I'd have blown it with Velma. Maybe not, though. Maybe not. Maybe not. It, 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 sometimes those, you know, they, they might, you know, appreciate honesty and go, listen, I've been hitting on the good looking one. <laughs> Oi, oi, four eyes. Yeah. Do you fancy it, Chubbs? <laughs> exactly. Something like that. Let's be honest, is what you're saying. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, I don't mean to be libelous, but Velma, she was quite short, the glasses, the short hair. Lesbian. Hung around with the dog. And lesbian. The I'm beginning to wonder if she yeah. was. Yeah, maybe. I, I was, see, unfortunately, I said lesbian there, and you still carried on with your assessment of what it is to be a lesbian. It's bad enough doing the cliches of having short <laughs> hair. You said the dog. Yeah, but well, she hangs around with a dog. Do, do lesbians do that? Well, have you seen some uh, lesbians? They're right, dogs. Good night. Have <laughs> <laughs> you seen what I've done there? You know what I've done there, Rick. <laughs> Ricky Gervais. We are. Yeah, what you've with done Steve there. Merchant. Hi. All right. Rick, we've get, got a couple of emails in here, and they're saying they enjoyed your performance over the Christmas period on a program called A uh, Hundred Greatest TV Moments. Yeah. Did you do an interview or something? What was the deal? I, I didn't see this. Uh, yeah, the w office was in there, wasn't it? And I was right. interviewed for it. But what are they talking about? With your, they enjoyed your performance. <laughs> Come on, tell me. You know, dear. No, I don't. it's the thing that I did on Razzmatazz. Oh, is uh, this where they found a clip? Or yeah, something? yeah, yeah. No, all right. I was in a band and we had one single out or something, and I did one TV appearance when I was about. Oh God! And it's they showed crazy a bit of it. That that's him, dude. It's Razzmatazz. crazy. Oh, this is this where they found a clip? Or yeah, 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 yeah. No, all right. I was in a band and we had one single out. Or There, particularly there in this picture, he even looks feminine. Like, if you don't know who that is and I tell you that's a woman, I go, that's a pretty woman. <laughs> it's weird. Like, the eyebrows and the eye part look very feminine. It's crazy that that's him. Because recently, I had, there was a picture of Stephen Merchant quite young, and it was Stephen Merchant younger. <laughs> but this is this is like a whole different person. It's crazy. And the other day, the other day, I looked up some people from my past, and some people you just kind of not really sure if it's them or not. It's hard to know because it, the, you know the name is maybe more common or stuff. It's hard to find the particular person. Like, oh, this could be it, but maybe not. I don't know. I don't. And then you look up some people and you're like, yep, 15 years later, same face. That's it. Just a teensy bit older, maybe a teensy bit taller, but same. It's crazy that I just, that kind of stuff just, oh man, I sound like Carl, but it blows, it blows me mind. <laughs> Something, and I did one TV appearance when I was about, oh God, and they showed a bit of it, about seven seconds, me on Razzmatazz. That was fine. Oh, God. Razzmatazz, for with, those that don't remember, with, was like a kind of, I suppose, what was it, like a kind kids. of CD UK of its time? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, uh, oh God. And it was, yeah, it was the, of the time, sort of new romantic. And, and I, they showed a clip of this? I looked about ten and about five stone with hair and makeup and girly clothes. My sister actually said, I look like Posh Spice. <laughs> Brilliant. Which is, there's a funny story about that, right? Because we were rushed and we had to do this thing and we were, um, oh god, and we were meant <coughs> to take a flight to Newcastle. And the, Where were you travelling from, London? Uh, yeah, but we, we got there and we didn't have tickets, we were told to be there, but the A&R man overslept, right, for the company, overslept and it was terrible and we were fretting and eventually it was too late to get the plane, we missed the plane, we had to get a train. And it was really kind of fine. They were back and forth. They're going, yeah, if they come now, we can still do it. We're going to miss it. And this was like a big promotional thing. And we got there, and they went, I, I oh, <laughs> God, right? And I had this sort of like jumpsuit I was wearing that I'd cut off. Put that on backwards. <laughs> a jumpsuit? Uh, yeah. Brilliant. I know. It was, Is it this was what was in the clip? Yeah. Uh, I had that on back to front, 
and there was no time, and I think I even mind drunk at one point, and it was awful. But the funny story is this: that when <laughs> we were there, we didn't have our tickets. This was at the airport. We bumped into Bucks Fizz. <laughs> The, the 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 guys and girls from Boxbees and their manager says like five of them. That's fine, right? dude. But that that is, I don't know what the blue guy would be, but that's like a hamburger, ketchup, mustard. The green guy's lettuce. I don't know what the blue is, but that that yellow and and red is just they're cosplaying as ketchup and mustard for some reason. I don't know. That's that's where my mind goes. And there's two of us, and they had five tickets. And this and Bucks Fizz tried to smuggle us through. <laughs> and so, so they went through the things, right? And they went tickets, please. And he just waved five tickets that he had. Like that goes, this is us, right? And they went, well, can I have a look at them? And they went, there's only five here. And they went, they just looked at us and went, sorry, lads, we tried. We tried. We were try. We were nearly oh. smuggled through by Bobby, <laughs> <laughs> Carol. They couldn't even, even with their powers, they were the height of their powers. that was like, was that really, that was they'd like they believed time. They'd already, yeah, they'd already done making your mind up. <laughs> I thought if anyone can get us through customs check, it was the fizz. But even the fizz what I like could though, not that get That reassures through. me, I have to say, about kind of airplane travel. You yeah. know, with these kind of troubled times, it's yeah. nice to know that even What's someone it? like Bucks Fizz yeah. couldn't get, you know, smuggle someone through. That's good, because even, you know, the t top security man went, hold on, there's five in the fizz, <laughs> yeah. there's five tickets, those two lads are not going through. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That makes you more secure about Definitely. air travel now. Well, it's lovely if I'm in America, you know, and I see five star, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. trying to get through customs. With two other lads. Exactly, exactly. I think, wait a minute, what's going on there? Yeah. Wait a minute, security guy stopped him, it's fine. It's fine, yeah. You know there's only met five in five star. Oh. It's lovely, it's lovely to know that. Yeah. I love the fact, and did you, did you know the fizz previously? Of course Was this your first not. run in with the fizz? No, they were, they were doing, um, they were doing, uh, the Taz, same as us. They were <laughs> doing the old Raz, same and as did us. They, did you recognise the Fizz and go, oh my god, that's the Fizz, let's try and sneak in with them, or did they recognise you? How did it work? Good question. They wouldn't have recognised that. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. Oh. Which, I love the, the audacity of going up to Buck's Fizz and saying, try and smuggle us in. Can <laughs> <laughs> you try and break aviation law for us? Now, <laughs> yeah. Now it's time to make your mind up. We're going to the land of make believe. I did that and they laughed. They went yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you through, lads. Yeah. Just stay tight. Um, I, I was actually uh, on top of Bobby's shoulders in a long coat. Lovely. Yeah, but Bill... <laughs> Seriously, though, I don't understand how, what their plan was. To to, to, like, they would have gone, yep, through. <laughs> it's the fizz, let them through. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't bother checking the... It's like, it wasn't even actually, awesome. we couldn't even get to Newcastle. Do you yeah, think he was wearing your Newcastle. jumpsuit backwards, that sort of gave it away? Well, no, but see, I didn't have it on then. I was, uh, I was just in I series. I didn't understand I just... that part. I didn't want to ask because... Maybe it made sense, but it didn't make sense to me. Why did he wear his jumpsuit backwards? I didn't get that part. Was there a point to that, or was it a mistake, and he didn't even have it on now? I'm confused, but whatever. That jeans and a t-shirt, then. <laughs> I didn't even have my hair gelled. I was just, wow. like, cash. I then. saw it. I thought it looked all right. Did you? Did you? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, for the... <laughs> 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 then you a tight jumpsuit. Nice yeah, cheekbones. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had some cheekbones. Yeah. yeah, that was the that was. If the anyone difference. else saw it, or maybe they tell no, it, they've got it. Because I'd love to see it. I missed it. Well, let's. I'll get you one. So if you have it, put it. I tell you what. Why not create a website, um, and put that clip on there on a constant loop, and then send the address in, and I'll give it out, and people can check it out for themselves. Yeah, maybe. brilliant. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. I'll have to lose weight now. Yeah. That film. Oh, now we come to the feature. We've, we're carrying this over 2002 because it was such a great success. Everyone's talking about it. I, do you remember I stopped my film reviews because I'm only doing films I like and I've done all the films I like. That's where other film reviewers fail. <laughs> sure. Because they review for substandard films. <laughs> exactly. My average is still nine and a half out of ten. Yeah. yeah. And no one's beaten that. Not Barry Norman, not Jonathan Ross. No one's got an average of nine and a half out of ten <laughs> for the true. films they reviewed. So I'm keeping it there. there I don't want to drop my standards. Mm. However, that film sounds good. This is where I pick a classic track from a film that I might not have seen, right? But I like the song, I might go and see the film. This is, um, Almost Famous. The film was Almost Famous. I haven't seen film. it. I, I haven't, haven't seen, seen it, it right? But, a song, now don't panic, listen without prejudice, this is Elton John, but it's when he was good, okay? When he was a bright, funky, young, Brit glam star, wonderful song, wonderful tune, wonderful lyrics, it's Tiny Dancer. That's it, isn't it? We've it's had some function. laughs, haven't we? We've learned as well. We've been educated as ever. Yeah, past ears, all that, that. We've got baguette information. We've had features such as that film sounds good. Exactly. <laughs> some song <laughs> that I like. Song for the lovers. Song for the ladies. Song for the ladies coming up very shortly. Rick, I was lucky enough this week to 
go to an exclusive press preview of Britney Spears' forthcoming movie, Criss Cross, or yeah. Crossroads. Crossroads, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's not related to the popular TV show. Right. Rick, I sh I'm assuming you'd, you'd love me to do a little review of it now. I can't because it's no, embargoed until March. I can only talk about it in no. March. No, I no. The press people Why are you will talking go about crazy. It now, no, I, don't, I wouldn't want you to. Well, know. no, I imagine you want to know all about Crossroads. Not really. Because I cannot tell you anything. Well, don't then. I mean, just. Well, well you can on. ask me questions. You can pump me for information. I cannot tell you anything about it until <laughs> March. I would pump you for no reason ever. No, but Rick, certainly not for information. Carl, doesn't matter what you ask me about Britney Spears <laughs> Crossroads. I cannot tell you anything about it. Okay. Right. Okay. But seriously, if you want to know the plot or what I think of it, I cannot discuss it. <laughs> okay. And if the listeners want to email in questions, they can. I cannot reply okay. until March. So hang on for that. I've seen the film already. <laughs> I've already seen the film myself. <laughs> in advance of everyone else, yeah. I can't tell anyone about it. Right. Until March. That's the kind of excuse. I'll tell you what, though. Go maybe on. I'll review it in March. No, you can't. Why? Because you haven't seen it, and I have. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to ask me, qu ask me a question now about it. Well, no. I'll you in March. Yeah, Not but if you much. wanted to know now, you couldn't know. I wouldn't want to tell you. <laughs> right. Song for the lovers. Yeah. Ladies, anyway, sorry. Song for the ladies this week. Um, I was lucky enough to um, get given as a Christmas gift the uh, Rolling Stones Complete Singles Collection. Good and present. I, well, present. it's an absolute joy. And I was f I'd forgotten how brilliant Wild Horses oh, great is track. Uh, from the Stones. So I thought I'd play that this week for the ladies. Let's leave them with that. Jagger and Richards at their best. Beautiful. <laughs> Watts is in on it. <laughs> Well, I don't know what, T. I mean, cannot. Wyman was still there <laughs> those days. See you next time. Bye. That was great. All right. <coughs> XFM 104.9. That's not what it's I wanted to do, but whatever. Um, that was awesome. That was really good. But now I'm, I'm, I'm just so curious as to where the hell in chronological order this was because... I don't know. I'll let you guys let me know because I have no way of knowing and I don't want to spoil other ones for myself trying to look for this one in the other list. I don't know, but I really like the images. I like the fact that I have images there. A lot of them helped because I obviously had no idea what the hell they were talking about. So that was nice. But, um, God, these guys are fun. I, the, I, 2002, how old was I? Oh, I was young. <laughs> I was nine, so I was going to say, I can't imagine when this was actually on air, you know, just driving around or whatever and listening to them. It must have been so fun, but um, I wouldn't have enjoyed this at nine years old. But if I was 30 in 2002, I just, I, I, I can imagine just how awesome it would be. I don't know what time they were on, but imagine just like driving to work or from going home or just going somewhere and just having them on just sounds fun and it's it's something I would have looked forward to so I get it I get people's love for this show and these people and just pure entertainment and it's so simple because it's just them being them and it's so lovely anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching this was awesome thank you special thank you rusty dog awesome that you did this I really appreciate it I'm still curious about like the the order but whatever the fact that it had images and stuff was really cool I really appreciate it very good stuff Anyway, I am off. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for everything. Thank you for your patience. I know this took longer than it was supposed to, and I know I kind of just disappeared for a week, but I needed it, and I'm good now. So, whatever you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, have a fabulous one, and I'll see you very soon. Peace.